Welcome to the second of today's round table discussions in our summer summit on judging. Uh, today is all about whether referees should be paid and it's an interesting debate and we've got some very interesting people here participating in this round table. Let's get straight to the introductions. Hi, I'm Naomi Falkard. I'm the chair of the Athletes Committee for World Archery. Hi, I'm Bob Pian. I'm an international judge for uh, well over a decade now. Uh, and besides being a judge, uh, my other job is an architect. Hello, I'm Thomas Hubert, and I'm head of event and marketing with World Archery. Thomas uh, and uh, Naomi and Bob, thank you very much for being involved. Thomas, I'm, I'm going to start uh, with you. Um, should judges be paid? Well, it, it's it's a very good question. And uh, I, I would say that in some part, it, it already is the case. Uh, we, we know that some countries have that kind of system in place. Uh, on our side, on what we see with the uh, current situation with the judges, we clearly think that uh, going through a professionalization of the judges would be a good way forward, a good way also to develop our sports. And if we talk about international events, that's pretty much the only site that is not being professionalized yet. So I think there's really something to consider there and it might be the next step forward uh, to develop the whole judge, the whole judge community. Uh, Thomas, before we move on, I think it's probably best to give our audience some clarification about who and who doesn't get paid. Now, from from my understanding, and I, I, I will stand corrected, you are the expert in all of this. But uh, uh, internationals uh, expenses are covered. At uh, indoor internationals, sometimes not all of the expenses are covered. Sometimes the uh, officials have to pay for their own flights, for example. The Olympic Games, um, all judges are treated the same across all different sports and there are per diems, there are honorariums uh, paid to the judges uh, and then domestically uh, and zonally it varies from region to region. Is that correct? That, that's absolutely correct and, and having some kind of structure as well in terms of remuneration and put something on place from, uh, from at least our side and probably from federation as well is, is something that would help having the same treatment for all judges and towards all events as well. And, uh, and there are huge differences for now, even in, in our events between, as you said, indoors and, and outdoors, for instance. So I, I think we need to bring also more clarity and, and fairness as well among all the judges that are attending all, all those events. Okay, well, that's really interesting. I'm going to come back to the whys in a minute, but uh, let's go on to Bob. Uh, Bob, as an official yourself, uh, do you feel you should get paid? First of all, um, you should not, it should not cost you money to be a judge. Uh, uh, I guess as an individual, I'm not here to subsidize uh, other people's judging and my own judging. Uh, I, I at least want to break even. Uh, it helps uh, keep uh, harmony in my family by, by doing that kind of thing. And, and that's just kind of just household uh, economics. Um, I think there's two kinds of activities out there. There's kind of amateur recreational activities and people are just kind of doing it for fun. And that's kind of the basis of uh, where we all started from. Uh, and so there is a tradition of just getting your expenses paid. Uh, but now, as Tom uh, begins to allude, there is professionalism, uh, not only uh, an expectation of what the judges do, uh, but also uh, as an uh, expectation of the athletes. Uh, they're uh, getting paid uh, by various methods, including prize money. Uh, and so the uh, whole different uh, topic opens up, uh, including uh, everything from uh, making a living uh, at being a judge uh, and uh, how uh, we are affected by uh, uh, the potential of uh, a bribery. You know, is prize money going to get so high that uh, a judge could be bribed? And uh, that's something, of course, uh, we don't ever want to get ourselves in a situation like that. Bob, I, I got that you, you feel that you should break even and you shouldn't, it shouldn't cost you money to referee, but I think you answered the question. Should, should referees and judges be paid? Should officials be paid? Yes or no? I, I think when we get to the professional level and there's a prize money involved for the athletes and the, we're dealing with professionals, I think we have a higher expectation for our judges. And uh, for, with that higher expectation comes 
accountability, uh, performance, uh, and a professionalism. Uh, and uh, just like I'm paid for uh, as an architect in my profession, if I'm going to be a professional judge uh, and do all of the certifications and training and accountability that's uh, required of me, uh, yes, uh, paint would be appropriate. Okay, so payment at a certain level for Bob. Uh, Naomi, as a, a world-class archer, uh, someone performing on the field and obviously involved in uh, uh, the advocacy of, of looking after athletes on the commission, uh, what are your feelings about judges? Should they be paid? Absolutely. Um, over the last 10, maybe more years, um, athletes have become more professional. We're competing for more and more money. And as a consequence of that, the judges are put under more stress to make sure that they do the job properly. And I think it's only right to have the same level of professionalism amongst the judges. Um, but also asking them to take time out of their own work. Um, so that they're, they're not being paid from, from their work. Um, so, so we need to comp compensate that. Okay, so here's a question for you. You're an archer that's got a prize pot in front of you. If you win a competition, you come in the top 10, top eight, whatever it is, you're going to get a certain amount of money. And I say to you, well, I'm an event organizer. I'm taking my sponsorship money and I'm giving it to your event pot. Now I'm going to take 25% of it away and I'm going to give it to the judges. Are you still in favor of it? Uh, yeah, um, of course the money's got to come from somewhere and um, potentially it could come from the, the prize winning part. Um, but it's only right that the, the judges get paid. So, yeah. And that's the key thing, isn't it, Naomi? Because mm -hmm. you know, as, as amateur sport, in inverted commas, becomes more professional, um, there is more prize money at stake. There is more prize money available as it becomes more popular and more broadcasters want to show it on television so they can get advertising revenue and all that kind of stuff. But like I said, the money has to come from somewhere. And I would say the initial place to look for it would be from the prize pot that's going to the athletes, especially when both you and Bob are saying, well, if the athletes are becoming more professional, then so should the judges. Silence. Toma, I come back to you. Um, it is a contentious issue. It's not, there's no, there's no doubt. Um, Bob's mentioned about uh, the potential for um, arm twisting, uh, bribery. Uh, Naomi's talked about the, 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 the fact that the prize pots are uh, getting higher. Uh, so when we look at other sports like football, for example, with coaches getting paid at a local level, it's done at an institutional level. It's done at a FIFA level. It's done at a, a domestic uh, federation level that the, the sport is grown by making sure that the uh, officials are incentivized. Is that the same for archery? Uh, I would say that ultimately that, that would be the goal. Um, it's, it has a lot to do with also, uh, how we want to manage our events and how, how secure we want to be. Uh, when Bob mentioned the bribery part, uh, we have in archery, uh, I would say the judge has less influence on the final result than it would have on tennis or soccer, for instance, because the decision mainly during the, the part of the qualification would be on the line it may have an impact when it comes to judging uh, which one is getting closer to the center. But once again, there's a lot of people around and we have some kind of safeguarding with our, uh, our board of justice and ethics. Now on the way we should organize or we could think about organizing that, that remuneration for, for judges. Uh, I think it should be adapted to, to all the different level we have. And, and not necessarily taking that from the prize money of, of the athletes, as, as you were mentioned, but it could be also something that, that is seen for Federation and also by us, uh, World Archery, as a part of our development duties to enhance those judges to come to our events to be judges, because most of them, and we feel that sometimes we're losing them because they have to take holidays, they have to take time off, uh, and it's, it's not fair to them because they're dedicating a lot of time 
and they would probably have a better training, a better structure if we can get a pool or a way of having some that are that are paid. So it, it could come, it should come from the institution first, I think. So Tom, are you saying that you're looking for a route to full-time professional uh, judges? No, uh, not exactly. It's the, the way I'm seeing it with the structure we currently have, uh, and to take a concrete example, is for now on a World Cup outdoor, we have seven international judges that are going to the, to the event that arrives two days before and leaves a day after. We could consider having these inserted as part of the development that we bring to the country that is organizing and having those judges, maybe two of them coming two or three days earlier and leaving one day later and have some training of national judges, which would help also the athlete, the, the judges on that country to participate to an event and get training to become a national judge or even get some judging training. Uh, I think that would be also our duty as an international federation to, to train also the base and use our events to bring something good out of it, not just come, get there and leave. Also, the way, um, the way we, we, we would see it in, I would say, the nearest future, if it was possible, is to not have all of them paid. Uh, at first, having a pool of them that would be, for instance, the chairman of our judges during the events, which have the main responsibility, uh, and we will, which will have also the role of of training the other and and leading the other, and it would allow us to have probably better reporting, uh, better uh, service from the whole judge community at that event. Uh, I think it would just be an enhancer for our events. Thomas, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, and I, I know exactly where you're coming from. You're trying to make uh, archery, which is your profession, your job, more professional at all levels. Uh, but if we take a practical example of a judge who has a full-time job, now, yes. th they're also the, the chair of the, 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 the judging commission at, at a competition, or they're the lead judge, or they're one of that group of people you're saying you're going to pay they still have to take off the time that they would have had to take off from work. And now you're saying we're going to add another three days, two at the beginning and one at the end. And what you're saying is you're going to compensate them by paying them for that, that time. Great. But now you're talking about having their employer treat them like some athletes have to ask their employers to treat them. I don't, I, I need more than 28 days a year off. I need, you know, 98. So to, 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 yeah, that, that, that's true. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to take more time, that, that's for sure. Uh, and we know that some judges have that possibility as well, not all of them. The, the risk about keeping the system as it is now is that we would lose judges that have not necessarily the time or that are not willing to take more days because whether it's days of holidays that are not paid by the employer, mm. which happens also to some athletes, uh, but it would be to avoid that and to make it fair to them because if they come to an event, whether it's on paid holidays or unpaid holidays, or it's on their work time and they, they lose some revenue out of that, as Bob said, they shouldn't lose money by trying to help archery grow. And that's, that's, that's not the way to go forward. No, I agree. I agree. It's a really interesting debate because I absolutely see why you're trying to do it. It makes complete sense to me, but also I see the other side of it being practically very difficult. Bob, uh, on that, practicality i don't know exactly what your situation is whether you can fly out the door from your architecture firm and just get on a plane and go and do an archery tournament without any issues but even if that's the case surely you have colleagues uh, in your country that can't a absolutely um uh, and, and to try to flip it around uh, i think the sport deserves uh, the highest caliber of judges and we want to attract those uh, those judges not based on their availability or their uh, ability to, to suddenly get on a plane and go somewhere at the last minute, but based on their uh, accountability, their knowledge, their performance, uh, just like uh, how an archer, you know, how good is this judge? And if we expect that type of uh, uh, level of uh, judging, then, then we're gonna have to compensate these people. If the person can get off, uh, that's one of the attributes of a good judge is having a, a flexible, work um, environment that allows them to do that. Uh, so uh, I'm not saying that we're gonna have a universal solution, but if we're gonna have um, uh, some sort of a 
system that looks professional. Uh, part of that in, includes some pay and, uh, for uh, accountability and professionalism. I'm going to come back to the responsibilities that come with payment, Bob, but I want to take from Tomo because, you know, and I want to just reiterate, I absolutely see where Tomo's coming from, that to make, to make the judging pool and the official pool uh, more professional is only going to benefit the sport, uh, the athletes and the marketing of the sport because it becomes much more transparent and easier uh, for, to be managed and, and assessed and, as Thomas said, measured effectively. Um, but what I'm seeing with Thomas' solution, potentially you're going to end up with an older group of judges who have the availability to deliver what world archery needs. And so you end up with just the older judges getting paid or maybe the more experienced judges, I should say. Well, that's yes and no, I would say, because it's already kind of the case with what we have now is that you just give more time to people that have, that are whether retired or that are not necessarily tied by the job. Um, we also saw, uh, for instance, in Madrid last year, some young judges that are still studying or, or not even working yet, uh, delivering an amazing performance as a judge, uh, but they have no revenue whatsoever. So wouldn't that be an help as well for them? Uh, and, and I think we won't lose that many potential from, from judges because some of the ones that are very busy, that are taking a lot of time for work, uh, with that kind of payment, uh, we can even consider that it would help them taking holidays after the event if they want with their family. And then their wives would not be so mad for them going away a week away and, and not seeing them. So I, I think there's also on that side a lot of, of positive things to, to come out of, of having some remuneration for, for the judges. And also some of them that are very active would be maybe more inclined to take those holidays for archery because they can get some revenue out of it than just taking holidays for taking holidays if if their workload is, is too much yeah that's a very good point bob your thoughts on that well, and um uh, well working as a chairman of judges um uh, i just love the teaching portion of it uh and and that's how you know i i'm actually as a chairman i'm not actually on the line you know uh, i'm not at the targets very often um i'm managing mostly uh, and uh, so you know, maybe you could say uh, at least starting with uh, judge management compensation, uh, that would make a, a lot of sense. Uh, and as a teacher, you know, your whole goal is to uh, find your replacement for the future. And there must be some sort of a ratio that uh, one out of 20 people that you come across, you know, actually make it up the ladder. So uh, uh, having that big, broad base of judges that we're training to move up to the pinnacle, uh, it's, it's what it's all about. Uh, and, and that's kind of a different judge development kind of a conversation as opposed to pay. But uh, to have uh, people that are professional trainers, boy, you better have some uh, professional support for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Naomi, um, I'll come back to you because you, you've, kind of, you've kind of given me the, the sort of the moral and the ethical uh, view that these guys are coming out and effectively allowing you to compete in a fair and transparent platform or on a fair and transparent platform. Um, do you think that the archers themselves should have a say if we're talking about a certain uh, subset of judges getting paid? Do, do you think the archers should be involved in helping select those, those judges that should get paid? Um, that's an interesting idea. Um... I don't know if that would work in, in practice, but um, it would be sometimes beneficial perhaps to be able to review um, how judges work um, and how easy it is to communicate with them sometimes. Well, the, the, reason I, the reason I ask that question is because what a lot of, all three of you are saying is that, that there needs to be a desire to get to uh, uh, to it to improve professionalism i'm not saying it's bad at the moment but the the remuneration is going to demand some further responsibility and now in most workplaces you have these 360 review mm -hmm. bosses are reviewing their employees but the employees are also reviewing their bosses now i can't think of any better way to review a judge than one of the participants saying 
they're good or bad is that is is that not a fair thing to say uh, absolutely um perhaps it would be good if we had an opportunity to report back whether a judge had done something particularly good or particularly maybe not not so good um, and just be able to feed that back to world archery and make that easier for, for athletes to do that because at the moment they probably only hear about athletes whining where actually there's a lot of good judges out there doing a lot of good work yeah who go unspoken because they've done their job mm. as far as you're concerned but they're not getting paid to do their job so there's no differentiation between them and the ones that uh, as you put it whine about um Toma. Uh, let's go to a slightly different level here. We're talking internationally at the moment. Uh, if we start going down to, as you suggested, we need to start doing this at a, a more sort of national slash regional level. Where do you see the difficulties there? And I, I'm, I'm thinking specifically about more developed archery nations than ones that are potentially developing. So I, I see many, many challenges there because there's need a lot of coordination and even if the in the biggest federations or with the most developed countries uh, we would say uh, in archery you see some discrepancies inside the country uh, so it already makes it difficult the the thing here is that uh, it should be first the responsibility of the federation to set some guidelines uh, on how the judges should be treated at events and then probably move the responsibility of having a small retribution to the organizer. Uh, we're not talking about thousands of dollars or, or anything like that. Uh, to give you a very simple example here in Switzerland, a judge that is judging for one day would get uh, 80 francs minimum, which is about $80, and a maximum of 120 per day. So plus the reimbursement of all that, that transportation and everything. Uh, there are some countries where you have per as well for, for the event, like, like in, uh, in Italy, in Brazil, they have different uh, rates according to the, um, to the regions. So it's, it's already in place in those countries. Uh, it's how we bring that in other countries. And, and I see the benefit of, of having uh, this kind of retribution, to keep it at a reasonable level, not too expensive, to try what avoiding having too much taxes as well but also to allow people and to interest them in, in judging in in many federation at national level or local level you see that issue of having the average age of judges just growing growing and it's not interesting to young judges or young athletes to become judge uh, and i think we need some kind of incentive and having some kind of of that small retribution would help them finding an interest as well and also we need that amount of judges to attend an event organizer need to attract judges to come to their event so the event can happen because that's one of the founds of our rules is that you have to have a judge to have an official competition so and, and in some countries it's a struggle just to find a judge mm. that's a really interesting point actually about attracting young people with with a a remuneration that is reasonable not only to to the competition to the organizers but also uh, to the judge themselves and attracting young people i think is you, you're quite right the, the way forward bob do you do you have any experience within your country about um, what how's it like uh, do, do, are there per diems available for uh, for judging domestically and does that help or hinder uh, the development of judges so n nationally uh primarily uh the money is there so you don't lose money judging. There, there's a uh, uh, honorarium or a stipend given to you and uh, it usually gets uh, spent uh, with ground transportation or airfare, your hotel and your meals. And if you uh, leave the tournament with something in your pocket, uh, that's, that's fantastic. You know, and potentially if you live close by to the uh, national championship, uh, you'd actually walk away with some money but uh, someone uh, flying in from out of town probably is just uh, breaking even. Uh, a couple of other things are uh, we're, we're trying to encourage diversity. We're trying to get more young people. We're trying to get more women into uh, our sport, both as shooters and as uh, officials and administrators. So uh, uh, th there's a reason why they haven't been involved. It's because they probably couldn't afford to. So that kind of goes to that 
uh, pay um, uh, thought. Uh, uh, the other one is uh, the idea that uh, if we can develop people from below. And so usually in your local events, you know, you almost just kind of volunteer just to help your, your mates out, and, and that's fantastic. But as you get higher and higher and higher, and as the expectations get higher and higher, that's really when, uh, and the need for uh, professionalism and accountability and uh, quality, uh, uh, that's when the, the professional really kicks in and, and the need to be uh, thought of as a professional. Yeah, there needs to be some kind of breadcrumb trail to go to climb the ladder a bit further. I, I get that. Naomi, I've got a, a, a bit more of a direct question for you. Uh, as an experienced world-class archer, uh, what's your experience of judging? Have you done any? Uh, no, no. I, only um, in training if I've judged like one of my teammates' matches. Um, but that's it. You have, so you have had some judging experience? Uh, loosely, not only in training, not at a proper competition. Do you see it as a potential uh future for you is that something you might get interested in um probably not because i want to get into coaching right so okay I okay think, yeah no that's yeah. that's a that's a great answer that's a real good out i'm not going down that road i'm going down that road but you're staying within the sport i get i get that yeah. completely um i let's move on then uh toma i'm going to come back to you um bob's mentioned it a couple of times what should be the return in addition to what you get now, if you were to pay judges? Accountability, responsibility, transparency, uh, you know, all of these things, where would you, what, what are you looking at? Is there, a, is there a set of rules that you're gonna to add to what's currently in place? Uh, so it, we're, we're still uh, talking theoret theoretically because to get there, there's a lot of things to, to take into consideration and, and to work on. But that's for sure. We would we would require from those judges that are paid more professionalism. Uh, probably it would involve tests of some sort that are a bit more complete than the one we currently have for for practice, for training, for reaccreditation. Uh, it, it would, in a general way, ask everyone and everything to be done more professionally. Uh, on the event, the thing that is I think crucial for us. And that for me at the moment doesn't make sense is that one year or one event, you can be the chair of the judges commission at an event and the competition after, or the next time you judge, you'll be just the judge on the field. So the responsibilities are completely changeable during um, among different events. And you can at some point be the responsible and the next time be managed by someone you were responsible for before. So it, it brings some kind of unclarity and potential lack of really feedback and strong feedback on, on how the judging was during the event because all judges are submitted to, to um, how to that, um, rating from their chairman that we received at the end of the event. So we have the feedback from the chair of judges. Uh, I think having some professional, professionalism, at least for, for some of the key roles, would imply having a better feedback and a better way to work forward uh, with those judges. So consistency through uh, hierarchy, effectively. Yeah. You become more senior. Yeah, it's, that's an interesting one. Uh, I'm just going to ask you a little uh, sub question to that, because I think it's quite important when we're talking about changing from a a non-paid environment to a paid environment, especially when we're talking about professionalism, clarity, feedback, and, uh, and transparency. Do you see any negatives to paying judges? Uh, at the moment, uh, not yet. Uh, there probably will be uh, that will arise when we really go deeper into that. Uh, but it also brings many more questions rather than, than, than issues in how much, uh, how many of them, for what type of events. So it, it has to be defined properly before it's taken into consideration. And also the most important part, where the money comes from. But I, I don't see a downside so far about having that part of the, the sport and the job uh, professionalized. 
Oh, all right, interesting. Bob, your thoughts on that? Uh, what one? What uh, should we expect more from uh, our judges and our officials if we are to pay them? And are there any downsides to paying officials? Well, I'm alluded to it. Um, uh, a ranking system uh, will have to be put in place uh, so that you are compensating uh, people for uh, doing the job right, uh, and that it's not just a oh we're just going to pay everybody. Uh, and then the other uh, concept is uh, uh, the financial uh, uh, tournament uh, checkbook you know, has to balance and having too many judges, uh, they're getting paid uh, lots of money would, uh, would kill everything. And that's what uh, nobody wants that to happen. So uh, uh, probably not to answer your question, but the ranking and uh, keeping a lid on the finances of the event, you know, have to uh, kind of get in place uh, because this whole pie has to, to really work uh, as the uh, sport continues to grow and be really prosperous in the last dozen years that I've been involved it's been, uh, at an international level. It's uh, seen just huge, huge uh, leaps and bounds. Yeah, no, I agree. Hey, Amy, uh, from an athlete's perspective and, and also as your role on the Athletes Commission, what, what would you expect from judges should suddenly start getting paid? Um, more more um i think already we have a really high standard of judging um and they're already um i don't know. I, don't, I, I don't know how to answer that <laughs> because i suppose the few mistakes that are made i would expect those mistakes not to be made so accountability, I think that's a yeah. perfectly good example. I think that's a perfectly good, uh, good okay. reason. And, and you have, uh, congratulations, you've led me on to my next question because uh, this one's for Toma and uh, not going to like it. You start paying judges and uh, let's say you have, a, you have to have a disciplinary procedure in place for those judges. You've put them through additional testing, uh, but they've made maybe one, two, three mistakes. Are you going to fire them? That, that's a very good question. Uh, Thank you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we already have that kind of, of scenario right now. And, and it comes back to the accountability thing is that we have a judge committee that is elected uh, that is uh, watching those judges uh, and also watching the disciplinary side of it. Uh, we have a system in place that is defined by rule or constitution. Having them paid would probably change a little bit the way we, we treat them if there is a major repetition of mistakes. But we are also aware that people can make mistakes. It has happened in the yeah. past. Uh, we can count the mistakes that were notified to us or that went to a disciplinary action with the judges. Uh, there, were, there were some of them. We, we know them. Uh, some judges have been removed from uh, after their accreditation being removed, so they cannot judge anymore. They're suspended or they're just evicted. So it's already happening. It's already the case. So I, I don't think that paying them will raise that number more than it will make them understand that they have a true responsibility on the event and that if they do a mistake or if if they don't they don't improve then there will be consequences because mistake is something that can always happen but we want to also give them some kind of carrot to just improve so I, I, don't, I don't want to put you on the spot completely here but I, I i want to get an idea and a sense of how much money we're talking about so we're talking about uh, a world cup event one of, one of the series events not the final and you're going to have a number of your officials who are going to get paid. How much are you going to pay them? How much are you anticipating to pay them? If, if we want, it's hard to, to just put numbers as, as once again, it's completely theoretical. But if we go for a reasonable plan with a reasonable per diem to what we've seen, global salaries all around the world, we can definitely consider having somewhere between 50 to 60 euros maybe a day during the event that that would be i think a fair guess to start with yeah and the reason i ask that question is because uh, when you start introducing uh 
large sums of money, you are opening yeah. yourself up to what uh, Bob's been talking about and bribery and, eff- and, and effectively bookmakers coming in and uh, trying to steer a judge to make a decision. I know it's more difficult in archery than perhaps in cricket or in football or in, in, in baseball, some of the American sports, it, it, but it's certainly a, a threat. But I think at 50 to 60 euros a day, you're not really opening yourself up to that. Uh, Bob, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Are, are there any negatives to, to, to paying uh, to paying officials or well, what do you see the negatives uh, well from the tournament organizer side of it uh, you know making your finances work uh, you know we're always trying to from the tournament organizer side we're always trying to bring the uh, uh, prize money up to attract the top archers so we can get uh, good uh, media coverage and more and more people come to our events and the spiral keeps on going up in a, in a positive way so financially as, as uh, Toma mentions uh, and in the United States, you know, we have other sports that uh, are paying their uh, judges. It sounds kind of similar to what uh, is going on uh, around Thomas's area. Uh, it's around uh, 100 or 200 uh, U.S. dollars uh, a day. So if you do work a, uh, a long tournament, you know, you could uh, actually uh, come back uh, with a pretty good smile in your pocket, uh, uh, feeling like you're, you've done a worthwhile job and a worthwhile effort. Uh, so I, th- I think those are the kind of numbers, uh, uh, kind of like that that 80 uh, Swiss franc, that um, 100 US dollar kind of area sounds about right per day per judge. And, and what uh, Thomas is mentioning that you're gonna have some judges that are kind of volunteering because they wanna move up the ladder. So they're gaining experience. And so they don't necessarily uh, get paid or get paid a lot. And then you have your senior judge who is there to uh, run around uh, to try to keep everybody in the right place and give every teachable moment there is uh, so that uh, when he retires, there'll be uh, 10 people in his place to do the job. Yeah, a bit of redundancy in the system. Okay, my last question. Uh, I'm coming to you, Naomi, first. Um, the lifeblood of most uh, Olympic sports, certainly the ones that aren't sort of mass participation, you can't just pick up a... Uh, a bow and arrow and go to your local park and uh, start shooting like you can with a football or even uh, a tennis racket and a tennis ball. So the lifeblood of our sports are, are the volunteers and part of the volunteer network are our officials. And certainly that's what I've grown up with. I think sport has developed and it has moved on, but by starting to pay more and more people involved in that volunteer infrastructure, are we going to lose something? Um, perhaps at um, a a local level um, if too many volunteers start expecting some kind of payment or reimbursement um, it's not going to be feasible but I think at an international level it's certainly necessary for for us Um, and just so that they can get all the the training that they need um, and so that every judge is working to the same standard yeah good point bob your thoughts on that w- will we lose something are we are we talking about uh the evolution of archery and now we've evolved to a state where international archers absolutely international judges of archery should absolutely expect to get that 100 swiss francs ballpark figure per day maybe another way to, to look at it is um taking what uh the games uh, does for their judges and uh, and officials, technical officials, and bring that down to a World Cup and World Championship level. Uh, not necessarily trying to start with a brand new judge that uh, has not even read all the rule, rule books and suddenly paying him uh, uh, for uh, to learn something. Probably down at my club level, that's not necessary. But m- maybe bring it from the top down to where uh, you have someone that... Uh, has been doing all the work and has been doing all the training and certification and staying current uh, and uh, compensating him uh, like you would at the games or, or something uh, like that. And maybe starting with uh, just the core people and then growing bigger and bigger as we know our sport is going to grow and get better and uh, attract more viewership. Yeah, that's that evolution I'm talking about. Tom, uh, final words from you. Uh, the sport of archery certainly grown over uh, the past uh, 10, 15, 20 years. And maybe this discussion is part of the natural evolution 
uh, of the sport of archery. What are your final thoughts about payment and how we should filter it? Well, I, I think it's, it's definitely um, a lead that we can pursue and, and start discussing because I think it's the way forward. Uh, all, if we take our international events, we basically have professional involved everywhere. I mean, you as a person, you wouldn't accept to do the commentaries on, on YouTube for, for free and voluntarily. So to have a good service, to have a good show of our sports, we need professional in certain areas. And the fact that basically judges now is the re only remaining part that, that is not covered by professionalism, I think it's, it's a fair way forward and also probably the best way to train and have better judges. Yeah, uh, I think it's been an absolutely uh, interesting conversation with all three of you to get your points of view. Uh, I'm sorry for putting, uh, well, I think all of you at some point on the spot at certain uh, points during this discussion, but it is a contentious point. But I think the one thing that's come out of it for me is that the sport of archery has certainly grown to a level now where it is absolutely crucial that we have this discussion. And I think everybody's pointing in the right direction that we start at the top, we start professionalizing our, our World Series uh, judges. Uh, so thank you to all of you, Naomi, Bob, and Toma. It's been an absolutely thrilling conversation. And thank you to all of you for watching our double header of Judges Summits. Bye for now.